So we got one round. We got the final round left. We got a final round. We got one. You get each one around. Uh, this is uh, judge a book. Uh, Leftovers edition. This is a game we play almost every show, in which we present you with the covers of books, uh, with the titles and authors blacked out, and you pitch to me what book that cover. Uh, is. Panelist one, whoever's is Andrew. Okay. Yeah. What is this book's title and what should, what should it be about? Okay, it's called um, Some Dogs Descend to Hell. <laughs> yes! <laughs> and and it's, it's about these dogs that were in heaven, but then they're like, wait a minute, what is with heaven and hell? This is wrong. Mm -hmm. Everybody should go to heaven. There shouldn't be a separated three-level metaphysics because dogs are like just that. anarchists mm. like that. And so then there was a struggle. Dogs trying to take over. Angels fighting dogs. Blood everywhere. And so then God is like, at first we thought that all dogs should come to heaven, but you radical uh, mm -hmm. anarchist dogs were sending you to hell. So then they build Ooh, steps wow. to go down. God, and nothing happened to the angels? Yeah, you know, the angels, a lot of them died. A lot of angels died because angels cannot be killed by mortal man, but okay. they can be killed by a dog or a kitty cat. And that pug right there <laughs> and a kitty cat. messed up some angels. <laughs> What's the pug's name? What's that guy? Uh, his name is Pug. His name is, oh, so he's like the platonic ideal Yeah, of exactly. Pug. See, when dogs die, they actually don't all individually go to heaven. Uh -huh. They all kind of merge their, in this book, in, a, in the logic of this book, they merge their souls into the ideal of a mega dog. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so that Pug is on the one hand a single Pug, but he also is like the platonic form of all Pugs. Like the Ur Pug. Yeah, the Pug exactly. is large, the contains Ur multitudes. Exactly. Yeah. So you can see that other dog at the very bottom just got a Booted and it's kind of falling yeah. down. He's like kind of ashamed too. He's like, "What am yeah, I doing?" Yeah, it's just his he head. Did. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, this is uh, God rubbing those dogs' faces in the mess that they've made. Right. And this is actually part two of a trilogy. <laughs> Don't get me started on <laughs> books one or three. It seems problematic to say the least. No, it's a uh, science for the pets in the afterlife, identifying messages from pets in heaven so by author Len Reagan. Uh, I like yours better. I'm gonna give that one a five out of five. I, I don't think I've given a five Ooh. out of five yet. I like uh, all dogs gonna hell very much. Yeah, that's okay, uncomfortable failure and loss. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bianca, what is this book's title and what is it about? We got a, a sculpture that is taking its head off and then another uh, sculpture lounging, uh, I don't know, is that lazily or lasciviously or in some way on top of the uh, figure that is taking its head off? Oh, uh, sure, this is uh, it's called Modern Romance. <laughs> and it's actually a guide. It's, it's not a fiction book. It's sort of a guide for how you need to deal in the modern world this world of like non-binary and non whatever. It's really about like fully removing your head from the process and just letting like your body and soul guide you. Try to be kind, but it comes out misshapen and awkward, and that's the basis with which our relationships are laid on. So the title again is Modern. It's Modern Romance. Modern Romance, mm -hmm. not related to the Albert Brooks motion picture. No, no. wholly unrelated. Okay. All right, so let's see what this title, book's title is. Emotion-focused couples therapy, the dynamics of emotion, love, that's and power. super close. It was very close. close. I think you're going to get a five, too. I think that's. Ooh. I think you guys were very, very yes, strong on that your one. Your face foulers. <laughs> 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 <laughs> So we're going on to the next round. Panelist one, got Andrew, this. what is this book's title and what's it about? We got uh, uh, some dashing folks of indeterminate gender on a horse uh, that is bespangled. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the title of this book is um, Letters from uh, Horsey Jail. And it's, it's actually a horse's oh, wow. cry for help. <laughs> you see, this horse didn't want to be a part of this thing. Uh, but when you are a certain level of, of gallantry, when you look like a horse like that looks, you sure. end up getting sucked into uh, people presuppose that you people think that hey that horse is amazing I want to make love on top of it <laughs> and clearly this horse does not want that to be happening <laughs> who would yeah well I mean some horses well, are, right. and some I'm horses judge. choose that life other horses are forced into that life you know it, right. it's a complicated it's about yeah, yeah exactly it's it's a it's a dialectic 
Uh, and so in this particular case, this horse was kind of a um, figure in a certain moment where we started to realize you can't just fuck on top of horses. Right. Because his book was just like, hey. So it's like a Martin Luther King, like letters exactly. from Birmingham. Yeah. To be honest, he felt a little bad make, making that. It feels like it's dishonoring the legacy of, of uh, letter I from Birmingham. I think I will say people care about horses. I don't fuck on top of horses as much after I read it. Really? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> See, for me, it was the opposite. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, it was one of those things like a Fight Club thing where it's trying to dissuade you, but the, it portrays it so convincingly that it actually seems kind of seductive. Yeah, yeah, well, so for me, I didn't know that horse making love atop horses yeah. was a thing until I read this. Because I just, I, well, well, I, was, read, I didn't know how to do it any other way. Really? Yeah. Yes, we're and I was like, oh, what I do I do? I read the book. I read a Vox article about the book. Well, I read the back cover um, <laughs> and yeah. was like, I got to look at my life. Yeah, so you stop cold turkey. I wish. I mean, I am coming back. Because I got a horse outside. <laughs> I'm not saying we should have sex on the horse, but I'm saying... Oh, of course not. Is there a breed that's better? You know what, I, know, I don't want to be tempted. Is Clyde so better? They've got a broad base. Plus, yeah, you don't have to ask, like, your partner. That mug didn't have anything in it, you fraud. I am, <laughs> of course. I didn't even know it was going to be here until like three seconds before I, I sat down. Like, apparently the set has a mug now. Uh, yeah, long story I don't short. Want long story short, don't yeah. fuck on horses. Don't fuck on horses. That's the subtitle. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's see what the real title was. A Certain Magic by romance author Kathy Moore. Ooh. Setting out a daring rescue mesh in the beautiful warrior Alina is haunted by strange dreams about a bejeweled island and a dragon and finds her only hope in exile Sorcerer Galen Radborn. <laughs> uh, I do like the social conscience of your book. I'm going to give you four and a half oh, okay. uh, out of five on that one. The only reason I didn't give a five is I was I was leaning into five, and then I saw the name Galen Radborn, and I said you didn't have Galen oh, yeah, Radborn, and you that. can't. Yeah. I can't give you a five can't if you don't it. have Galen Radborn yeah, in that. it. So you're it, you born Galen. Rad. Can't beat yourself he was up. Literally born, he was born Rad, rad. Yeah. and his whole family going yeah. back generations of yeah. born Rad. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Bianca, what's this book's title and what's it about? You know, it's it's so crazy that out of all the books in the world, it's Some Dunks Get Out Part 3. <laughs> This is your third installment. Yeah, uh, that's it's just so crazy to see that. So this is where the the dogs and cats have now melded into oh. one. It's one mega domesticated animal. Uh, I, you know what? I think everyone just calls it master. <laughs> it's now playing out a revenge plot. Right. So. Once you've received those messages, you kill yourself, you go up to help the animals in the battle, you find out you were just cannon fodder. Oh, it's there. like a Red Wedding yeah. twist. Yeah. Again. Like it was all just to get us. Exactly, yeah. exactly. We thought that he was the casting them out to punish them, but it was to protect us. Oh, okay. <laughs> so the name is oh, it's just All God, All Dogs Go to Hell, Part 3? Yeah. Right. All right. Oh, I well, like it just says All Dogs Go to Hell, and then it's got like three in Roman numerals. Or like a cat scratch with yeah. three. Yeah. Um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right, let's see what it is. It's called The Cats. <laughs> Bloodlusting cats feverishly terrorize a city, a novel of screaming, clawing horror. Yeah. I like yours better. I am uh, weirdly yeah. good at actually determining <laughs> this. I'm, I'm giving you the full five for leading into continuity in the way we've never had anyone do that, building on the, on the previous one. So, Andrew, what's this book's title and what's it about? <laughs> the note there says, leave town at once or there will be trouble. <laughs> and this guy's leaving uh, these kids' bedroom. Okay, this is... Oh, no! Uh, this is... This is a book called It's Not What You Think It Is. <laughs> and it, it's about the... Uh, the <laughs> you know what it's about? I'll tell you. It's about the story... It's about the story of why Santa Claus eventually decided I need to gain weight and wear a costume. <laughs> <laughs> because I looked so threatening exactly. climbing into people's houses exactly. looking yeah. like Richard Widmark. Exactly. Because Santa used to just dress like that. And, and he was see the red. He liked yeah. red. Uh, but yeah, he was scaring kids. And every and there was a time where every December 25th, people would start to raise up against him. And that's when that sign was made. <laughs> There's leave an extra town. from Mad Men crawling into my house. Exactly. So they just had to say, you got to leave town or there will be trouble. We're so sick of you breaking into our houses uh, and leaving toys. Who gives toys to kids? <laughs> Are you sending a message? Permission? 
Yeah, eating our cookies, drinking our milk, <laughs> wrecking the roofs. You know that those reindeers mess up. They're, that's some asphalt. Yeah, roof work is expensive. Yes. And so the title, it's not it what you think title. it is, is what Santa had to keep saying. And what, he just what, got tired, so he's he, like, yeah. I mean, nobody could mistake me. Right. He actually made a deal with Coca-Cola. It was Coca-Cola mm. with their Sponsored ad campaigns him. that kind of made that image so famous. And that high fructose corn syrup helped bulk him out. Did they fire him for the bears at some point? Uh, the bears wanted in on the action. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the, uh, that's... And they're like, Similarly, we can't, we can't people were responding houses. poorly to right. bears in people's yeah. houses. Yeah. You think it's bad to have a, just a dude in your house. Think about a straight up bear. <laughs> To be fair, it's a dude with a list of children's names that says naughty. And the bear, not only the, yeah, but the, the bear can read neither the list nor the note telling him to leave town. Yeah, he doesn't right. know. Yeah, bears are totally out of the loop on this. That now, true. I don't know why those two boys are in separate beds and yet in the same bed at the same time. It's I think it's yeah, separate bed beds, two, but one large cover. One. I think that he actually sneaks back in on the book, grabs that red a blanket, and uh -huh. that's what oh, that's makes Genesis. the first... Like Scarlett O'Hara style. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, or like in every superhero movie where the first outfit is not like that just good. like sweatpants. Right. Right. Exactly, yeah. and then they like get their... Right, and then Tony Stark makes you the nice one. what that middle step is. <laughs> where like between sweatpants, they're like, I think I gotta really look into better fabric. All right, you know what? Another five out of five. I'm oh, very happy with this. You guys, yeah, you guys a, are knocking it out. I don't know that I can compete with that. That's a perfect book. But let's see what the real title is. It's a Hardy Boys mystery, <laughs> The Secret Warning. I'm not sure what's so secret about it. It's, <laughs> it's right there in the room. Wait, there's no description. What is it about? Uh, it, uh, well, here's the interesting it's thing. It's a mystery. I, I tried to find the description of it. Uh, they rewrote the Hardy Boys books in the uh, early 1960s, and this is one of those books that has a completely different plot based on uh, if you got it from before 1959 and after 1959. A mystery within a mystery. Did well, they have a bunch of extra so, covers laying around? Well, the ostensible purpose was to like tone back on some of the racial stereotyping in the early books, which was pretty common, mm -hmm. but apparently they also went through through like in the early books the hardy boys the 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 police in town were kind of incompetent there were a lot of rich people getting away with themes and stuff and then we get to that sort of late 50s 60s mentality of like we got to teach kids respect for authority and to respect capitalism so they took out all the stuff about cops being incompetent i love that the first hardy boys and... were too revolutionary <laughs> right. Right. And, well, racist. and racist and racist yeah. so it's like <laughs> that's funny. yeah that feels right uh they did it with me too too uh, but Hardy Boys was was they did it more aggressively. So okay, this is your final one, Viaga. This is your last chance, Fancy. Don't let me down. Okay, I'll try. Song. What's this book's title and what's it about? <laughs> you got a lot of pet books this week, Kate. It, it, it's called "You Don't Know What You Get When You'll Squeeze Them." <laughs> <laughs> it's about a. It's about a woman. A lot of her life's a mystery. She lives in a beach town, as you can see. <laughs> And one curious thing is every day she wakes up and there's another animal at her door. And it's just, it looks distended and it's yowling. And she knows, I know what my job is. She's got to hold them a little bit of a distance because uh, you don't know what you're going to get. Right. Sometimes it's a secret. It's like, just, do they talk? They say... that, well, it's just a secret. Sometimes it's a spritz of cologne. Okay. Once wasps. So what it really is is about her in this sleepy town how these animal messengers, it doesn't make sense. You don't know what's going on. She's flustered by it, too. She comes from a family of witches, but sure. it's nothing like this. <laughs> Only a witch could hear those secrets. Yeah. To us, it's just <laughs> Yeah. As you can see, she's very far from the town. So it's about she's her isolation. Everyone thinks this monster just squeezing animals. But then over time, you know, the wasps sent her to a hospital where she met an ER nurse who oh. was a warlock. And they were able to work together. She really healed a broken town. It's really beautiful. A, a town that had apparently shunned her because she yeah. was living on the outside. Well, that's what witches do. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful Thanks. story. You're getting another five out of five on that one. I'm oh. very happy with these well, stories. Well, you don't know what you get when you squeeze me either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see what the real title is. Uh, Fear Street by oh. R.L. Stein. One Evil Summer. Chrissy is perfect. Perfectly evil. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was was Fear Street uh, different from Goosebumps? Did they yeah, make, yeah, Fear so, Street was like a little bit so, older. Oh, mm. yeah. I think I read one of those called Hit and Run, and it talked about a girl having condoms in her bag. That's the thing. It was like a it's little like, spicier. And I feel like Christopher Pike 
was also like not goosebumps yeah. was around Fear Street. Like this is Kate's daily wig. Yeah, Fear Street's great. <laughs> so we got an expert to weigh in. <laughs> I feel more knowledgeable. It really influenced me as a writer. <laughs> Okay, so who won that round, Kate? Bianca won that round. Bianca won that round. So that makes Bianca the winner of the day, right? Um, Did she win our grand prize, too? Oh, oh. Do we have yeah. a grand prize? Yeah, okay. Okay, hold on. At a time. Okay. okay, so her winning for that round is okay. a ship in a bottle kit. It's a okay, ship, actually, ship in a bottle kit. It's the Mayflower. <laughs> And my people it's, came on. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it's one in a set. So if you ever find the Constitution out there, the, the ship, I mean, not the actual <laughs> document, um, you'll, um, you'll have both. I don't know if all the pieces are in there. Josh, are the pieces in there? I don't know. I don't think I ever opened Complete kit. Simplified instructions. So like what's my, the grand my, prize, my, Kate? Okay. Did we not? Do we have a grand is prize? Is this not it? Because this is very no, grand. Really yeah. awesome. No, that was just for winning the round. Okay. And what it fits in with my home say. decor. Yeah, I wonder what she has to say about that's where a ship in a bottle very well. Our, our right. grand prize today is um, Mastering Italian, tape 11A <laughs> and B. So if you are already got enough mastery of a foreign language, 1 through 10. Um, um grazie. <laughs> Cert selected portions are under phono record copyright. I don't know what that is, but there you go. <laughs> so congratulations, Bianca. Congratulations. You're a big winner. Uh, and hey, I think that's the uh, You guys have fun? Yeah, that's I'm going to tape time. over these two little divots so I can record You're old enough to know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, all right, so hey, thanks guys for watching, and thanks Bianca and Andrew for playing, and uh, we're done. We'll see you next time. Yeah, ba -ja, ba -ja, ba -ja, ba -ja. Uh, thanks, Josh. All right. This is so fun. This is awesome. This is okay. so weird. Lucas. Lucas, I just want you to know, this is all, it's all happening for a reason, Lucas. Just, just know I'm sorry for what I had to do, but I did it for a reason. Lucas, you're my best friend, you know that. I'm gonna make this right, Lucas, and... I've got to go, I've got to go. Lucas, I'll, I'll be there sooner than you know. Bye. <laughs>